Hello, my name is Michelle from Michelle's Fancy Felts and today I'm going to talk to you all about wrapping. Now don't worry, I'm not about to bust out some tunes or anything like that um, and it's got nothing to do with Christmas but it is all to do with making the insides of any of your felties. Now this is specifically with reference to the Easter wreath bunny. Um, so if you've bought that kit, um, then I do say if you get stuck with the wrapping then come and have a look at this video and that is this is that video. Um, so we will be talking mostly about the Easter wreath but it does apply to anything else that you're going to do. So this is how I start off most of my animals whether it's something like the hedgehog or uh, like this bunny, their bodies and their heads, I do start off with this method. Okay, so I'm just gonna get down to it. Now for this, you will need some core wool, or if you prefer, you can use um, colored wool as well, but you will need the slither wool for this kind of wrapping. There's a different way of doing it if you're using just the bats, like the rectangular shaped ones. That's more a method of kind of folding it in. Um, but with the slither, uh, which is what I like to use best for this, you will, uh, um, you'll need a skewer, some core wool or coloured wool. It sometimes works out about the same price anyway, depending on where you're from. And you'll need some needles. Now, I like to use a three needle holder. Sometimes I use a pen tool, but for the main part, I use this. But if you don't have that, as I say in the Easter wreath kit, you can get an elastic band and just elastic band a collection of your needles together. Um, and that does help as kind of like a budget multi-needle tool. So first of all, you're going to take your um, core wool and your skewer and unravel it a bit if it's all tied up. And what you're going to do, put your skewer just close to the top of your core wool and you have that your fingers behind it your thumb in will be used in front of it in a moment but first of all we just fold over this side now these skewers are really handy i managed to find some square skewers they're just from amazon and they have this little handle which makes it much easier sorry harriet's a bit shouty um you can use it with circular skewers but you just find that they start um they, to start off with it's a little bit tricky to get going because they wiggle it around but you see with this one because it's square if you're pinching it nice and tightly it does actually start just pulling it wrapping it round by itself um, but we just need to give it a little bit of help so you start off have that at the top skewer on top fold it over now sometimes you might be working out the top of your head so you just decide by eye or if you've done a sketch as to how much you need um, but we have it for uh, with a template for the easter wreath if you have a look on here you'll be doing this size for when it's unfelted so that's the kind of shape that we're looking for it might be slightly smaller if you wrap quite tightly it might be slightly bigger if you wrap quite loosely but that's the rough shape that we're going for now the, we want to really keep it super tight because that means that you don't have to do quite as much stabbing um, as you uh, go on later so it saves you some time okay so holding it nice and tightly thumb on top fingers around the back and you're just going to start turning your skewer and you see how that's just caught it nice and quickly but I'm keeping it nice and tight you see how tight that's going and I'm going to wrap it three or four times like this now you see how my um, slither is actually twisted there you want to have it nice and flat you always keep it on the flat um, and now we're going to go up because this isn't tall enough for my diagram so we're going to take it diagonally like this and go up the skewer now when you do this this bit at the top gets a little bit saggy so if you kind of push that in with your thumb and just keep wrapping and keeping it tight so if you find you have got a saggy bit you can go over it a little bit with um, your wool and tighten it up or just unravel it and go back to where it was loose so I'm going around a couple of times I'm going to measure it against my template yes that's the right size now I'm going to go around a couple of times up here and now I'm going to take it back down again to the bottom because with the Easter Bunny we need it with quite a fat bottom Got it tangled there there we go that's it we'll sort that you want it quite a fat bottom so the bottom bit we're going to go round three or four times um so a little bit more than we did at the top and now we're going back up to the top again and this time because we want it a cone shape don't go up quite as high as you did before and then we're going back down again now i've got a bit of a lumpy bit because i've done it and foolishly didn't use my good microphone and so i'm just redoing it again so you shouldn't have that lumpy bit but that can all just be stabbed in and I'm just going to take it round and round on the bottom part now, 
like so and then if you ignore that bumpy bit then we've got about the same shape as we have on that diagram okay and then what you can do is with these ends if we just let go of it it's just going to unravel so what you have to do is take your needles and do a couple of stabs up and down and that just holds it then then it's not going to unravel now if you find that a bit tricky because I've been doing it lots and lots and lots so obviously I'm I'm used to it but to start off with it is quite fiddly so just keep practicing unravel it if you find it's unraveling as you're going along you can just stop for a minute give it a couple of stabs and that will just hold it in place for you if you find it's getting really saggy unravel it back to where it was it was tight and just try again or just completely unravel it and start again it sometimes just takes a little bit of practice now when you are finished don't just yank it off like that because you sometimes leave the insides behind you take the bottom and just push it up from the bottom pulling your skewer out and then you have your shape and then according to the um, as by the instructions we just go along stabbing and stabbing and stabbing until it gets to the right shape okay so that's how we do it on a big shape and depending on what size you want say for the hedgehog we just go round and round and round on that one bit to make a nice fat short little body um, so it just depends on, on how tall you want I did a weasel yesterday so that was obviously quite tall and skinnier so it just depends on what you need for for which item you're doing at the time so that's how we do it with that now we can also do um, wrapping on a smaller scale so I use this skewer whether I'm doing um, arms legs um, if it's a bit of a chunkier tail like we did a weasel yesterday then I would use that if it's say like a little mouse's tail I'd, I'd tend to use a pipe cleaner um, with that because you want that nice and skinny but for most things I try to use these skewers but as an alternative if it's something small we can use a cocktail stick for doing many things so if you have a look at this bunny for his little mouth here I just use a cocktail stick wrapping around a cocktail stick to do this bit for his little bottom jaw there and also if I get the hedgehog back again for his little ears that was just a little one on the cocktail stick so I'll show you how to do that as well so for this you would take um you'd normally have the coloured wool for this because it would just be on the surface when it's really small bits there's no point doing it um, with core wool because then you just have to cover it anyway it's exactly the same principle so I take it in a, a strip if you want it a bit skinnier than that if you need it neater you can just give it a little bit of a roll in your hands and that just neatens up any of the edges but it really depends on what you're doing you don't want to roll it too much because obviously uh, we want fuzzy edges for when we're attaching it then it's the same principle pop it near the top fold it over now this cocktail stick is actually slightly rough it hasn't got splinters you want to check that they don't have splinters because if they do when you're trying to get them off they can get stuck and then misshape all of your work but this one is slightly rough so actually when I turn this it does start catching by itself if you can see there it's just doing it by itself um, but mostly they're quite smooth and you, you do tend to they just go round and round and round and round and round um, and it can be a little bit tricky so the trick is sorry how it's so loud the trick is fold it over and you put one finger behind your thumb in front and then I just hold that very edge of wool can you see there's a bit of wool there I'm holding that and I'm actually turning that bit of wool and that helps catch it and then when it's caught you can just turn the cocktail stick you don't need to be turning the wool but you just need to get it caught to start off with and I'm keeping my hands on it so it keeps nice and tight and when you get to the end if you just let go it would just all come apart um, and also it's quite small for you to be able to needle felt in there you could do a couple of gentle jabs but you don't want to be snapping your needles but what you can do is just a little trick keep rolling it round in your fingers and I just work on the middle part depending on what you're doing but for most parts we want to attach these bits onto it so I just work on the middle part and leave the ends fluffy and if you just keep rolling and rolling it between your fingers a it helps kind of tighten up but make sure you're doing it in the same direction you've turned it otherwise it'll just unravel but not only does it help tighten it up it also felts it to itself so when you let go of it it doesn't unravel and then like we did before just push it off sometimes it's a little bit tricky and there you have a little sausage and then depending on what you do that could turn into an ear that could turn into so for the bunny 
that was like his bottom lip um, so it just depends so decide on what size you want it obviously if you want it skinnier then you just use more wool if you need it fatter then uh, less wool sorry if you need it fatter then you'd use more wool okay so that is it with wrapping it really is quite simple once you've got used to it but it can just be a little bit fiddly once you're once you're starting off um, so just keep trying keep practicing with these ones we only used tiny bits of wool so you could always practice if you've got some bits left over and just have a little go uh, but keep persevering if it goes wrong get rid of it try another one and with the core wool, if it goes wrong, unravel it again and just try another one. Because when you only do a couple of little tacks, it can then just come undone by pulling it. So don't worry about that. Okay, I hope that helped and I will see you again soon. Thank you.